That is your news. And now to the spin. Since the first of the year, pot has been on sale in Colorado for recreational use. People have been waiting in line for hours, braving the cold, just to get, yes, some wheat. So far, it seems to be paying off for retailers. First day sales surpassed a million dollars, according to some estimates. But not everyone is happy. Skeptics say this legal pot use will lead to addiction. It will harm minors who smoke it, and it will lead to more traffic accidents involving impaired drivers. In fact, in an op-ed piece for the New York Times that's making waves today, David Brooks took on pot smoking, writing, it is not something people admire, and that sentiment is certainly nothing new. Take a look, for example, at this classic scene from Platoon. You smoke this shit so to escape from reality? Me, I don't need this. I am reality. Times have changed, though. It's become more socially acceptable to smoke. In fact, these days, 20 states, in fact, and the District of Columbia allow medical marijuana. We having a little party? Have we forgotten that the use of marijuana is illegal? Well, I have um, glaucoma. I get nervous in crowds. Herpes. Trey, <laughs> you get nervous. So, do you get nervous right? and cry? <laughs> it's not my problem. Yeah, that's not, that's not why. Not my issue. Um, you know, we wanted to look at some of those pop culture moments, not just because they're fun, but because there is a big shift. The idea that anyone who uses pot for any reason is in the in the platoon idea, trying to escape reality. Um, you know, is a, is a, is a long-standing criticism of all kinds of drugs. And David Brooks' column I want to read from because people are talking about it a lot today. He writes that Reading healthy... Reading or mocking. Well, I'm going to start with reading, Abby, but thank you. For that. Um, thank you for quickly that. move to the mocking portion of the segment. <laughs> he, he writes that in healthy societies, government wants to subtly tip the scale to favor temperate, prudent, self governing citizenship to encourage the highest pleasures, like enjoying the arts or being in nature. Or watching the cycle. And discourage <laughs> lesser pleasures, like being stoned. That argument right there, if you actually look at it, and this is in the New York Times, this is a serious uh, conservative commentator. Mm -hmm makes no sense. First of all, why is it that avoiding pot would automatically make you enjoy the arts? Uh, there are a lot of people who would say that, if nothing else, using pot could help you enjoy the arts. Absolutely. And he never goes on to explain why that would be. His larger point, of course, is one that focuses on prohibition rather than some measured use. And I think culturally, right. that's where the laws matter. Everyone understands that addiction can be a problem with all kinds of stuff. Right. Drugs, Alcohol, Cheetos. pot, food, <laughs> uh, other bad behaviors, and responsible choices that you make. Uh, and Cheetos, look, che I know I didn't want to get into your Cheetos. Yeah, I, mean, I, you I don't up. always like to talk about it, but, but Cheetos are delicious. Okay, they're just, you heard it here. Breaking um, crystal. But, but Cheetos think, are delicious. <laughs> Who are you? Um, but I, but I do think that's the, that's the big question here when you look yeah. at these laws. These laws change, and the culture shifts with it, and you get away from what I think is ultimately a really inaccurate prism. I think it's the David Brooks prism, which is you're either a drug addict with all these problems and you can't right. enjoy nature and you can't enjoy arts and you can't be a responsible mm -hmm. member of society, right? right? That's one extreme. Or you don't do right. anything ever. And we've had prohibition economics, politics, and law in our society. And alcohol, it was a failure. Mm -hmm. And the prohibition politics of pot, I think, are also a failure. But that's absolutely right, that you can integrate a small amount of marijuana into your life without wrecking your mind or losing your life or losing your marriage and all these sort of things. How do you like, know? Uh, I do know that from personal experience, and I'm not afraid or embarrassed to admit that. And Brooks has this argument that if you smoke weed, it makes you dumber, right? I mean, like, I read his article. I feel like that made me a little dumber, too. But, you know, look, he talks about we are nurturing a moral ecology in which it's getting harder to be the sort of person most of us want to be. I sort of reject that argument because I know, again, from personal experience, yeah. that you can smoke and it can open you up to new perspectives, new ways of looking at the world. This is why creative people have been smoking marijuana for centuries, right? And this idea that it's the ruination of society, or the ruination of your life, it's just completely baseless. And this idea that um, you're either all in or you're all out is not necessary. Right, that's exactly. There's a lot of smart people who are lawyers, who are doctors, who are writers, who use it a little bit just as they use wine a little bit. That's exactly how I took the article. And this was the part that threw me off when he said, smoking all the time seemed likely to fragment a person's deep center. And I thought, doing anything all the time. <laughs> I was telling Crystal and Toy and I'm a big runner, and, and that's considered healthy. But if I were to run all the time, I'm pretty sure that would fragment my center as well. It might make me, uh, you know, pretty 
in shape, but it would it would any doing anything honestly for, you know consistently is bad for you. I'm not a pot smoker. I know it's shocked to all of you guys. But the problem I have is is I do think that smoking pot is less harmful physically uh, and even emotionally on your body uh, and mentally. So I I really have a hard time seeing people who can go into the liquor shop, buy three, five bottles of wine just for themselves, take it home, and that's considered totally fine. You know, and then you see people that go out and smoke one, I don't what, joint? I don't have the yes, right terminology. Yes, okay. I, I, I don't yes. know what you call it. I mean, yes. smoke, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> but she did get it right. You know, smoke a, a, a J. You go out um, and you I smoke, just, you want to roll it up I at the end. I have a hard time and, yeah. rationalizing those things. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't see how that makes sense. I agree. Well, I, I got to say, I, I have a different take here. You know, I read David Brooks's article, and that line that you were talking about, Torre, where he says, in legalizing weed, yes, we're enhancing individual freedom, but we're also nurturing a moral ecology in which it is a bit harder to be the sort of person most of us want to be. I mean, you know, I think that's true. And I think we could make a, like, David Brooks law out of that, <laughs> quote, what other things mm. make it a bit harder to be the sort of person most of us want to be? Maybe Cheetos? Cheetos? <laughs> Only Cheetos. Maybe, I mean, go maybe to twerking Cheetos. in legalizing twerking? Are we uh. making it a little bit harder to be the sort of person we want to be? What about supersizing? <laughs> Legal supersizing of McDonald's meals, making it a little bit or harder. Or watching too much TV. Or, or taking, watching too much TV. Or, I mean, personally, I think Walmart is making it us all a little bit worse. <laughs> oh. So I, I think we should ab apply the David Brooks rule to, to all sorts of phenomena. Well, I think, your, I think your complete evisceration of <laughs> the logic of this op-ed is very useful, though, because we usually require a higher standard for our laws than just... I don't know, that might not be a good idea. Well, especially we from a guy who's supposed to be, the, like, a free market the, the times, conservative. Right, How, like, paternalistic the, is this? Yeah. The Times usually requires a higher standard for their editorials. Wow. Boom. Well, at the bottom Boom. of the piece, I don't know if you read, but it said... Paul Krugman is off today. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Krugman I want to be, be clear, though. I want to be clear. We, we okay. are happy to have David on if he wants to make his case on the piece. Absolutely. We're happy to have him on. <laughs> I'm sure he's coming. All right. Are we going to leave it there? I think we're going to leave it there. All right. What is it called? Is it called a joint, Abby? It's called a joint. We are done here. Or a Jay. Or a Jay. <laughs> later, later, Abby's going to give us all a tutorial. <laughs> Maybe some trees. Our Facebook Stay fans tuned. are also talking about the Colorado recreational use laws. And if they want to see it extended nationwide, Tony Kirkley predicts it would improve the economy. Yes. Now, you can head over to thecycle.msnbc.com to see just how on track Tony is about marijuana, stocks rising, the money, the leisure. And while you're there, don't forget... I've said this before. It's Don't important. forget to like us on Facebook. Very important. Up Very important. next, it is not just you. Why America can't seem to keep its most popular New Year's resolution. I've said this before.